Everybody, this is JP3 here. We're back with Halo 5 Guardians Legendary Playthrough. We're on part number six, Reunion, uh, reuniting us with the Master Chief and Blue Team's exploits uh, on yet another planet now, a planet titled Genesis, which is a little more important later on in the campaign. Uh, Reunion is a pretty mediocre, uh, I would say pretty me mediocre experience uh, from a gameplay, uh, even level design perspective. It has some low points. Uh, some medium points, depending upon uh, what difficulty you played on, or you know, at what point I guess uh, you're replaying it, or you were playing it for the you know third or fourth time, or is it your tenth time? Uh, those things factor in. I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, talking about what's being said, what's being discussed between Blue Team, Master Chief, and Cortana. Uh, I could spend an, an hour and a half uh, and not even scratch the surface uh, talking about my uh, uh, reaction to this mission from a story-based perspective. Uh, it is terrible, and uh, so I'm going to stay away from it and focus more on the gameplay uh, because I'm sure that uh, you've probably, at this juncture, either A, developed an opinion that's positive or negative about the story, and uh, whichever way uh, you feel about it, you're probably... Uh, uh, somewhat well informed about how you feel uh, or whatever so I'm not gonna go in and try to change that or validate that uh, in any way shape or form here so uh, the first uh, minute and a half or so uh, is you is this mission kind of starting up uh, presumably again maybe the first time or two you play this this is more enjoyable you set back you listen to blue team chat it's mediocre at best dialogue uh with no character development so that you know is pretty bad but uh you know eventually you get to the action um i'm gonna take a quick detour uh first off just to show you this little easter egg here he has a skull i don't remember which one it is but all you have to do is punt that guy um i just like the fact that there's a different animation for it uh you can go up and melee attack him too but i want to grab the stickies and the sword now, what you would normally do here is stick this elite with the plasma grenade. That's what you need to do. Don't do what I'm doing now. What I'm doing now is uh, just to mix things up. If you stick him with a plasma grenade, usually it will explode, killing him or at least damaging him severely, and then blowing up all the energy boxes around him, which will take him and the rest of his team out most of the time. And then you just shoot the grunt that's in front uh, or that's patrolling, I guess, further away. So ADS right there, get that sniper. Sometimes he'll shoot you, but your team should be close, if not right behind you. And then now you're going to look for the grunt with the fuel rod. Uh, finding the Jackal Major is perfectly reasonable to start out with here. I think I've found the grunt with the fuel rod pretty fast here. So now I'm going to try to get some long range uh, plasma plus pistol tracks there, but I'm not able to get a headshot on that Elite. And so at this point right now, instead of uh, just standing there from relative safety which is a good idea 
if you're struggling with this mission, uh, then uh, I'm instead going to come over here. I did think about uh, trying to ground pound there, but uh, since I could not kill enough enemies uh, from that ledge over there, uh, I decided against that because I would have died pretty fast. So as you can see here, uh, my carbine skills uh, probably look do more diminished than they actually are. Uh, the weapon balancing updates uh, resulted in the carbines uh, uh, bullet mag, headshot bullet mag being uh, nerfed and reduced uh, from distance and in general. And uh, since there's plenty of carbine, I just would rather spam it than... Uh, 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 I don't know, I guess restart and, you know, just continually get better with the carbine until I look pretty decent with it. Um, that guy went down with the overcharge because he was the guy I shot so many times with the uh, carbine after he had been deshielded. Uh, so this is, you know, very Reachian, uh, that, that what just happened there. The, the game essentially reading your inputs and reacting in ways that are very unnatural. Uh, again, defending himself there by running past me, uh, despite the fact that he didn't see that I was coming there. And certainly if he did, he would have been, uh, involved with my teammates there. Just, you know, very input reading here. So, you know, at this point right now, I just, I don't know. I didn't know why he did, he was not, um, de-shielded there. So, I don't know. For some reason, I just... I remember playing this very much and thinking, like, let's see if I can headshot him with the plasma pistol since I can't overcharge him with it. So, I was just being silly there. There's no good strategy to what I did just then. Uh, just re-overcharge him or bring up a uh, needler like I like to do a lot of times in that case. And just, uh, you know, kick his ass the normal way and don't try to be stupid and silly. I, but I honestly truly was trying to test out and see... Uh, because you can seem to get plasma pistol headshots on the grunts. And I wanted to see if it worked on him because I'd literally not uh, tried it before. Uh, at least not purposefully. So I like to go to that opening first, kill the guys there, and then come to this one where I will be attacked by the phantom. But we'll also have a better shot on the grunt with the fuel rod. That's not him. That's not him either. Now, again, you're facing off against the, um, the phantom turret, which is stupid and sucks, but... Now that I've got the field rod guy and I got the guys uh, over there, uh, the jackal and grunts or whatever that were over there, now I'm pretty comfortable coming down here. Uh, there's that guy left over. I forgot I left him there, but um, he, uh, like I said, we were able to kill him or have just a smidge of cover there. I could have ran up to the rock or something like that uh, to avoid him. Yeah, that guy just, he will not die, uh, that, that grunt. And my timing on the plasma pistol, which I didn't use a whole lot in blue team, I, if I remember right. Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't use it a whole lot at all there. I'm just, my timing's off with it. Uh, was off with it when I was playing uh, at this time, having played uh, Halo Reach so much. Uh, so yeah, it just, you know, I had to get my timing back on for using the plasma pistol. Uh, which I'm pretty sure I do come the San Helios missions at some point pretty fast, so... I've already played those through, and so those are done, and yeah, I'm pretty sure there are, are very few uh, overcharge fails in the way you just saw there. So now it's time to use the Plasma Caster, which is um, new, a new weapon in Halo 5. Uh, it shoots a plasma bolt, kind of like you would imagine with the grenade launcher uh, from Halo Reach. Uh, it kind of has that a similar function there, but you can also hold the trigger down, and it will shoot, even just still using the same amount of ammunition, it will shoot a large bolt that will then ex kind of flower out and explode and cause area of effect damage. Uh, I'm, again, have not played with it in a while, so I'm a little rusty with using it accurately here, uh, but not too badly here. This, These two elite, uh, I, I, I don't know what their actual rank is, but they look like miners, or their shield strength is kind of like a miner's shield strength, or maybe a ranger's. Uh, they both have carbines, and they'll uh, jack you up pretty fast. Uh, but their sh shields are weak, so you can usually take them out pretty quickly uh, if you're ready for them. My teammates kind of took him out after I weakened that guy a little bit. Now, this guy over here, which I always think of, ha of, of as having kind of the shield strength or equivalent of a major. Uh, I have no idea what his actual rank is. Uh, when, I don't no idea why 343 had to change those. They were perfectly fine as is. Uh, but anyway... So here he comes, and we can see how ineffective the fuel rod is. It also suffered from the weapon updating 
uh, or weapon rebalancing crap. Uh, they essentially slowed down the projectile speed of it, and they may or may not have also reduced its splash damage. I'm not really sure. I might be wrong. I just, I know for a fact they slowed the projectile speed. And just to, if I haven't mentioned this already, uh, those weapon balancing updates, they may have been fine, necessary, whatever the hell, for multiplayer or, uh, you know, whether Arena or Warzone. Bringing it into the campaign was my, uh, is my biggest gripe. Uh, they just, you know, kind of blindly threw it into the campaign, even though, obviously, this stuff would have been pretty carefully uh, selected and balanced. Uh, based upon the, the weapon strengths at the beginning. And so, and they put it into the campaign with no thought, no uh, desire, or, you know, no, no, there was no intention of that being, uh, that was not the motivation at all. Uh, the campaign uh, was not being complained about as having weapon balancing problems. They just carried them over into the campaign for whatever the hell reason that they wanted to. Uh, so anyway, as you can see here, I'm just fighting stuff with these weapons uh he should already be dead since i put that right on him before but you know he's an elite major or a sorry a jackal major uh which means his armor stronger no way he doesn't even wear armor so come over here and grab these uh splinter grenades because hey why not uh carry a full carbine with you unless you prefer a different weapon uh, for whatever reason, and it doesn't really matter what your second weapon is, which is what I'm holding now. We're going to be switching to a special weapon uh, in just a little bit. One of the things about Reunion is that there, it is one of the missions in this game, one of the one that is just rife with a lot of these non-cutscene pauses and moments, uh, just like this one here. Uh, there's, there's, you know, a couple, I think there's three of them, and then there's a large one at some point, or maybe it's two and a large one. Uh, there is an, a middle, a mid-game cutscene, but since we have score attack on, we won't have to see it, but, um, yeah, this one's a pretty long one here, and what I, what I'm referring to essentially is just that things going on without combat taking place. Earlier, maybe confusingly, I referred to replay value, uh, in, in a, kind of a backwards wordy sort of way uh i would say again initial replays this level is arguably on the it's it's at least in the in, in the better half of the campaign the replay value of it though especially if you're not a speed runner uh, is i would say much less uh much less desirable because of these big long uh pauses and such so anyway so, I like to go left here. Now we're going to be facing mostly, if not, uh, yeah, entirely Prometheans uh, at, at this point. Uh, so, I like to go left, go into this breakable thing here, go up here, and up here you will find a, a, B, uh, a binary rifle. But before we even touch it, we're going to snatch that guy. He's got a binary rifle. And then we're going to take these guys out using the cover of the rock. And sometimes they will just sit right there and let you do this. For the most part. And this is before you have to deal with any of the Promethean soldiers except for the sniper that we killed. So I'm going to pull the beam rifle out here, uh, binary rifle out here. But my intent is ultimately to save at least some of its ammunition for the Warden battle. Somewhat of, somewhat of as a backup. Um, I'm pretty sure I just totally glossed over the fact that I picked up this unique weapon called Pool of Radiance. Uh, it is a very special fuel rod that fires a... Uh, a powerful bolt <laughs> what a fail there uh, a, a powerful bolt that has a very strong area of effect damage upon its uh, upon landing and so if you can hit the warden with all 15 of these uh, you got a pretty good chance to take him out uh, but if we don't we're going to bring the binary rifle with us and uh, spoiler alert we won't kill him fully with this uh, pool of radiance uh, so, long story short, we're going to we're going to be happy we had the binary rifle, and you'll see why once we get to that point. It's better to see if you can pick up obviously any fallen foes uh, ammunition before you go to that one, which uh, will not disappear. However, the fallen foes ammunition will. Notice how I missed it; it was there to the left. Uh, you can sit right here and long range shoot most of these guys. If I was pretty confident that I could kill the warden with uh, the pool of radiance and or any other weapons I found uh, between now and then, uh, I would snipe these guys and make this go a lot faster. However, because there's turret guys, uh, which can down you in one solid hit with their turret, 
uh, two hits if there's some kind of like splash damage or something that uh, nicks you. Uh, we generally have to stay back from these guys. So I'll go ahead and pick up that ammunition uh, while it's still present. Because the light rifle ammunition seems to disappear very quickly. Or at least it seemed like it was when I was playing the Meridian Station missions. So here I'm just, uh, since I don't see them, I'm going to make sure and grab as much of that ammunition as I can get. There was very little left, of course. I think there was just one round left uh, or so. Anyway, so just put the pool of radiance right up there close by so I can come and grab it. Uh, while I'm also, again, making sure I get all the ammunition I uh, need. Don't want to get stuck over here and then need ammunition if at all possible. So I really disagree that that grenade does not kill him since he'd already been shot a few times. Uh, needless to say. Again, it just essentially limits you to just shooting him five to six times. His armor will break and then you'll headshot him. Uh since the grenade won't work even though it hit him directly and he'd already been weakened yet again just 343 and I would even argue prior to 343 just grenades generally being very disrespected uh, since uh, at least combat evolved um, or, or at least Halo 3 if not since combat evolved uh, the original so Notice how we just you know, we kind of got close up with those guys and just uh, hit them with some grenades and start spamming the light rifle. Here we're going to spam the turret until it runs out of usefulness. Uh, these guys should be pretty soft at this juncture so we can kill them without uh, having to worry about running out of ammunition. Then we can go back and pick up our pool of radiance and proceed forth. Ah, I was hoping to ADS that guy, but he wouldn't stop doing that stupid crap that no one likes. Phasing, you know. <laughs> I barely dodged the effect of that turret. That was kind of funny. I knew I was going to get the kill, and so if, uh, you know, or at least I was confident I was going to get the kill. So if I did get down, I, my teammates would pick me up. We'd move on instead of me uh, cowering uh, and running from that uh, bolt or lob or mortar or whatever the hell that thing is. That light, hard light thing of such and sorts and whatnot. So we're just going to keep on pressing forward here, and there is a very specific way I like to approach this battle, uh, which uh, can allow you to manipulate it the way you want to. Come down here. Come down here and go through here. The closer, you have to get close enough to the warden for this to happen, but what will occur is that he will push forward instead of him moving back. If he moves back, then he'll be over there by the watchers. And I missed the first shot, of course, with the Pool of Radiance. Um, if, he, the fir if he goes back, then what happens is he takes... Essentially, he's there's strength in numbers. He's over there with the Knights, the Watchers, and it's very, very hard to uh, kill him. But when he's out here and active, which is... We've essentially kind of drawn him uh, closer to us, then he's much easier to hit with this weapon, uh, as you would imagine. So, my, my uh, approach here is to keep the Light Rifle... Uh, that I picked up over there, lay that uh, binary rifle down, and just use the light rifle to take out threats that will come up over there, where I'm shooting right now. They're really your biggest threat besides the warden in terms of uh, trying to whittle down your health while you're trying to defeat said warden. So I could not find the warden. Once I found him, I was comfortable then uh, uh, with attacking... Or coming out from cover. I just I couldn't see where he was. He can also, of course, be to the left. And if he's I, that was a very stupid impulsive shot. He could also be to the left, of course. And you don't want him shooting, uh, throwing those you know stupid ass uh, void, tracking void balls at you and such. Uh, they tend to have a way of coming up and over hills and you know whatever other garbage they did to make those uh, rounds track. But notice here again, we're just constantly beating up the support that are willing to take their. Uh, take their stand over there on that hill being very careful to watch for watchers that can heal the warden up fully I want these guys the hell out of the way that way they can revive me they'll be alive to revive me if I'm down and they can come from behind which should give them a better chance to be in cover from the warden's attacks if uh, they do need to indeed revive me so I think we've hit him three or four times here with the critical hits maybe that's four right there We've missed a few shots and such, so 
And I'm not sure. Maybe he got healed by the Watcher. I don't really know because I couldn't see. Uh, I took the shot there before I realized that he was about to fire up his uh, stupid sniper beam laser thing there. So I had to move as I was depressing the trigger. And of course it resulted in us uh, missing him. So now that we're out, we're very happy we brought the binary rifle. So no matter what occurs, I'm going to come down here and try to snipe him. If... <laughs> it will help me a lot, Warden, actually. Uh, but yeah, so just snipe him right in his face. He goes down for the fifth. He needs to be down, uh, or he needs to be hit critically six times. And then just sweeping that across his face after a first hit following his uh, his little um, I'm hurt animation. Uh, he goes down. If that makes any Hopefully that all makes sense. So I've got plenty of extra binary rifle. So I'm just going to use it to take out any soldiers I see. Uh, let the Watchers do their stupid crap. I have no bullet mag with that weapon from here. Uh, which is the way it's always been. They did not change the light rifle. Um, so, you know, that's the way it always was. So we draw him out from moving around too swiftly there by hitting the knight in his uh, special spots. And that's a good thing. Now we're going to see if we can snipe one of these soldiers. Go ahead and get rid of these guys. Uh, just speed the proceedings up here. And at some point we're going to take that knight out. Uh, the way you take knights out in this game. So I think I got this guy. I think he's going to stay out in the open. So I can just light rifle him from range. Now I'm going to come up here and grab more light rifle ammunition. And get a better vantage point perhaps. Nice. One more shot. Maybe I can uh, take that guy's carapace off and he doesn't show us our face. Uh, please, somebody in can indicate in the comments section why the freak that happens. Because it doesn't make any damn sense to me. <laughs> so, I'm going to go to the safest spot in my mind on the map uh, for when dealing with knights who have incinerator cannons that track. Which is stupid. So there's one soldier left, so we just uh, brute force his ass, and now we can take these guys out. Now the benefit here is that the the incinerator cannon uh, mortar tracks, but because we're lower than this elevated rock, it tends to track right into the rocket. Oh, this idiot shows us his uh, weak spot on the back, and now he's gone. And then all we have left is this guy, and we're just going to take his carapace off. Shoot him in the face and move on forward. Hello? So now we have, you don't have to uh, worry about picking up weapons here unless you do not plan on taking one of the Phaetons. Uh, so I just picked that up. I probably should have handed off one of my teammates. Uh, don't ask why. But anyway, because I don't need it. But uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, anyway. So there's, yeah, it's long part here of talking and dialogue and garbage. Uh, that um, I will not uh, spend a lot of time on. <sighs> I mean, there's there's so many things that are retconned, incorrect, cheesy, stupid, wrong in this entire conversation. So, let me go ahead and talk about this. So, up here, there's two options. This is actually probably the best part of this mission, the best uh, concept of this mission, is uh, you have two different ways you can go. You can either, A, use the Phaetons uh, to get to the uh, objective, or B, you can take footpaths using man cannons and Spartan abilities. Um, we're going to go the least fun. I'm not saying it's not fun. I'm just saying the least fun and the more boring route, but it is the right way to go on Legendary Difficulty. Uh, but it's certainly not the most fun. Any other difficulty, I take footpaths because it's a blast. The reason why Legendary Difficulty, it's much tougher to do this, is because of these turrets and how dominant they really are. Especially when you're dealing with, of course, multiple turrets. 
uh, you're dealing with other enemies because you will face off against Prometheans on the ground during your uh, travel up those footpaths and due to the general ineptitude of the AI when they have Phaetons, including, but not limited to, blowing your ass out of the water whenever they're shooting at these guys from above and you're down there, you know, scrumming it up with them. So, anyway, long story short, on Legendary, unless you want to have some fun and take some big risks, best to take the Phaeton and uh, just turrets first, infantry second, and use the uh, your ability to move in and out of cover. I don't even think I use the boost at any given point during this playthrough, which is kind of strange. I use it a lot in enemy lines, but not here, uh, because it just wasn't really necessary. Uh, so I just uh, keep it a very, you know, nice, comfortable pace. Take this path uh, to where you go up over here. And uh, that way you have a nice vantage point on those crawlers and ultimately on this knight. Those missiles have a nice degree of tracking to them uh, for you, so uh, be sure to use them. Uh, and they also, of course, uh, function very well uh, and just generally kind of quote unquote carpet bombing an area all right so now we've got more turrets again prioritizing them one at a time number one thing this is a pretty resilient vehicle unless it takes a lot of sustained fire from those turrets the infantry can't hurt you too much unless of course you just sit there and let, let them but they're usually pretty easy to kill before they have a chance to really do a lot of damage the turrets however especially since they usually come in pairs uh, you definitely want to be a little more careful with them as you can see here just bombing them once and then shooting them until they blow up uh, one at a time taking out one or shooting a volley of missiles at one and then taking cover if needed and then you know just one two punching I guess them So, one, get out there and uh, come through here and go down here. You can go a little bit further there if you do a boost off of that and then do the Spartan, uh, the ground pound. Anyway, once you come up here, the mission ends. Um, despite the fact that it looks like it might continue on into some sort of awesome battle in this little area here. But it does not. A battle does occur in that area, but later on in the campaign. All right, guys, that is Reunion, the sixth playable non-Guns Down mission of the Halo 5 campaign. Uh, I'm really excited because up next we're going to do the St. Helios missions, uh, two, of, two out of the three of which I believe are uh, the best missions in the game. Uh, and I think some of the best missions in franchise history, I think they hold up very well. Uh, but as for now, however, this is JP3 preparing to sign out. First, I want to remind you, of course, to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this content. Uh, please use the comments section to talk about this level, about my commentary, about my performance. Good or bad, doesn't matter. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe and hit the notifications bell if you haven't already. But yes, now I'm signing out. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you very, 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 very much for watching. Goodbye.